In this uh, video, we will talk about Archaebacteria. Archaebacterians are the very, very old or ancient bacteria. Now, when we say ancient, that means it is believed that probably these were the organisms which were there when the life actually first originated. Or we can say these were the first living forms and the reason is that they are capable of surviving in all extreme conditions. Survive in extreme conditions like very hot condition, very hot condition that means 100 degrees Celsius or more that is in boiling water. They can survive in highly acidic condition highly acidic pH also and they can survive in highly salt areas that means salty or salinity. So high salinity area also they can survive, very high acidic pH that is extremely concentrated acids in those conditions also and in hot water springs where the temperature is 100 or more than 100 also that means they can survive in boiling water also. Now we will talk about what are those things which help these bacteria to survive in those extreme conditions. Now these are bacteria that means they are prokaryotes. So typical prokaryote like structures, they do not have any membrane bound structure, do not have membrane bound structures that means no organelle no nucleus instead the genetic material is naked and we call it nucleoid so instead they have nucleoid now let us come to some special things the cell membrane the cell membrane in case of normal uh, bacteria is made up of simple protein phospholipid layer. In this case, the cell membrane is made up of branched lipids and hydrocarbons. This is one reason that they are able to survive in extreme conditions. The other structure is the cell wall. Now cell wall in case of eubacteria is made up of peptidoglycan. Whereas in case of archaebacteria, if we draw that if this is the cell, cell membrane, then outside cell membrane there is a specific layer and this layer is of S proteins. S proteins means this is the surface proteins and this is responsible for protection. Now it could be only the surface proteins or there is one more possible arrangement that again this would be the cell membrane. Then there is an additional layer of here there is an additional layer of pseudo-neuramic acid. Neuramic acid and on top of it then there are again these S proteins. So this is again the S protein layer. So there is a special type of cell membrane and a special cell wall. These two structures are responsible for these archaebacterians to survive in all extreme conditions. And this is the same reason why archaebacterians do not get affected by lysozymes. They are not affected by lysozyme. So lysozyme is a chemical which we call the bactericidal. It ruptures the cell wall of bacteria and when we say that we are normally talking about the eubacteria. That means lysozyme is a chemical which can damage or dissolve peptidoglycan cell wall. But if the cell wall is made up of something else then this substance lysozyme is totally ineffective. In case of uh, archaebacterians, 
reproduction is by binary fission. So this is similar to what we have seen in case of normal eukaryotic cells. Now we will talk about three special types of archaebacterians which are the most common ones that we talk of. The first are known as methanogens. And why are they called methanogens? Because they are methane generating bacteria. They convert hydrogen and carbon dioxide into methane. Now these methanogens, they are found in intestine of animals and they are also found in marshy areas. So these are two places where these methanogens are commonly found. Intestine of uh, animals and marshy areas which are again not very normal conditions where the organism can survive. The second type of archaebacterians they are known as thermoacidophils. Thermo is for temperature, acido is for acid and phil is for loving. That means they are found at very high temperature areas. That means it could be a hot water spring near volcanic areas. And we know one such thermophilus bacterium, its name is Thermus aquaticus. And this is the bacterium from which we isolate a very special enzyme called TAC polymerase which we use for polymerase chain reaction in biotechnology or genetic engineering. So why we are able to or why we want that enzyme from this particular uh, bacterium is the steps in polymerase chain reaction or PCR they take place at very high temperature. At high temperature, our normal DNA polymerase would get denatured. But because these bacteria are normally found at higher temperature, they have thermostable enzymes. So we extract the enzyme from this bacteria and we use it for PCR. And they also are found at a very high acidic conditions. So these are again very extreme conditions where these archaebacterians can survive. Now the third type of archaebacterians are known as halophils. These are called salt loving bacteria. They are found in a region which has high salinity. Normally what happens is if a cell is placed in a very concentrated area. Suppose this is a cell and outside it is high salt concentration. We know that osmosis, during osmosis water moves from less concentrated that means hypotonic area to hypertonic area. So if it is a normal cell, exosmosis would take place and the cells would die of dehydration if complete water comes out of the cell because the conditions outside in which these cells are living is hypertonic. But these archaebacterians, they can survive in very, very concentrated salt conditions or in high salinity areas. So they can also be found in Dead Sea. And that is why we see, we say, that these bacteria are ancient because when life originated, temperature was very high. Due to torrential rains, all the salts dissolved in water and a broth was formed. And in that broth, because of high salt uh, content, it was very concentrated. So this is what we believe that probably these were the first organisms which uh, existed when the earth actually was cooling down and the life originated and the two structures which help them in survive all these extreme conditions are the cell membranes and the cell wall. Cell membrane is also different from the typical U bacteria which is a normal uh, phospholipid bilayer. 
Here it is branched structure. The lipids are also branched. Hydrocarbons are also there. And the cell wall outside the cell membrane or plasma membrane, there is an additional layer of surface proteins which are very unique and these two layers protect these cells from all these extreme conditions. So this is how Archaebacterians are different from the typical eubacteria. Now in the next part we will take up the economic importance of bacteria or different types of bacteria.